Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video, I'm going to be setting up my March weekly spreads. Now, if you haven't already seen my previous video where I set up my March monthly spreads, you can click right over here. As I mentioned in that video, this month's theme is directly tied into my Laps for Life campaign where I am swimming laps and raising money for Reach Out Australia in support of youth mental health. You can find the link in the description below if you're interested in donating and you can support me on my journey. Before we get started, I just wanted to show you a quick flip through of the first spreads that I created for my monthly spreads, starting off with my cover page and my quote page. Now I didn't write March on my cover page this month because the print, I just didn't want to write on top of it. Now this is my monthly spreads page and you have my habits trackers, including my gratitude log and my finance tracker. This header is also in a format of bookmarks that you can find on my Etsy store and I think it looks really, really cool. So now let's get started with the weekly spreads, although technically this next spread is not a weekly spread, it's just my goals, my to-do list for home, for work, and just general notes. And I thought that I would keep everything nice and simple for this month because the focus is always going to be on my paintings. And so I was originally intending to do this kind of bookmark style header or sidebar, whatever you want to call it. And then basically just do one painting and then cut it in half. But as you'll see soon, the painting I decided to do looked too good by itself, so I couldn't cut it in two. So I'm just going to do something else entirely. But anyway, you'll see that in a moment. For this month, I wanted to go with a rapid logging style or a rolling weekly style. And to do that, I decided to use these Dutch doors. Now, what I mean by rapid logging or rolling weekly is that there are no planned weeklies. So I don't have specific boxes for each week or each day of the month, meaning that every single day that I need to write something down in my to-do list for the day, I will just write that on that day instead of having blank boxes spread out through my whole journal. Now this next idea I got from Instagram. Now plenty of people are doing it this year and it's using washi tape as the tabs on your Dutch doors and I thought it looked really really cool. I have two different colors of washi tape that I'm using. This kind of blue pattern one and a blue sparkly one because it goes really well with my theme of the pool and I've already used those in the first monthly pages that you would have seen in my previous video. I'm just laying down the washi tape as best as I can. It is kind of hard when you have to do such a long strip of washi tape and the sparkly blue one was not fat enough to have one piece folded over to the other side. I had to cut two pieces of washi tape and stick them back to back. Whereas for this particular washi tape, I could just fold it across, which was a lot easier. But anyway, it turned out really nice regardless of how I got to it. I just cut off the edges of the little washi tapes poking off on the side and then I started writing out the day of the week that I was currently doing this in. So it's the Tuesday the 1st of March and I'm just writing Tuesday 1st of March at the top and I'm going to write out my to-do list for the day including a few little washi tape and decorative pieces and every single day that I need to write something out I will write something out. During my week, I have specific times of the week where I do have plans, including my work schedule. So instead of including that in the rapid logging section, I decided to include an events tab at the bottom of my page of the Dutch doors, where I would just write in my work shifts and write the days and the hours that I'm working each, each week. And this particular little box will be repeated on every single new week day page, whatever you want to call it, of this month. I'm just quickly showing you what I did for the next day, so for Wednesday, and just every day that I need to write something down. Let's move on to my weekly spreads painting. As you can see through the outline of the pencil, I'm doing these dolphins in the water. So just straying away from my pool theme for just this spread. And I wanted to keep it within the same style by using the blue blobs, but instead of making the blobs blue, I decided to make the blobs white and the background blue. And so basically just kind of reversing the layout. However, I do end up changing the blobs and making them a little bit more water-like. Um, in this case, I probably should have used gouache for this painting because I feel like it would have turned out better. But I am really happy with how it turned out. This kind of abstract water vibe 
and you see the white bits on the top will represent the surface part so where you would see kind of light reflecting onto the water and then down below you're going to see no white blobs and this is kind of the underwater side of things where you would see the dolphins now I'm just painting out all of these little bits and what I want to do is use a very light blue wash that slowly gets darker in certain areas of my page so on the right it would be light and on the left it would be dark because I am inspired by this picture here taken by an Instagrammer and I think it's so so pretty and I really wanted to recreate it but in a in the same theme as my pool theme and I think it turned out pretty cool it's not exactly the same but you know abstract way it is. So here I'm just going to speed through the painting process. It really is just squiggles across the page. Some of them are long, some of them are short, some of them are round, some of them are, you know, finer. And then I grabbed a bigger brush to blue wash the entire background except for the dolphins because I am using watercolour and as we know you can't layer watercolor unless you want a kind of browny weird color when you're mixing all of the colors on top i have to pay attention to that although i technically could use gouache on top of it and then in that case i wouldn't have to worry about it but i thought that i would just do everything with watercolor this month because it just feels nice and I'm, i have been enjoying using my watercolors again the blue wash part with a bigger brush was super nice as well because i haven't used a big brush in watercolor for a very long time i feel like i'm always using a small brush and doing very small detailed things so straying away from that was also really really fun to add more abstract to this painting i'm going to do these kind of swirls although would you call them swirls like squiggles or round curved lines across the blue wash part and this represents the the sand bed under the dolphins and some parts are darker and some parts are lighter to reflect the bumps in the water on the sand level part and i'm just using direct paint from my paint pen and then lightening it with water as i go through the process <laughs> up and a normal speed version of me painting it is very slow and in total painting this particular portrait this particular painting I think took me about four to five hours because I was really messing around with the details and just wanted everything to look as nice as possible I like having clips where you see a sped up version and also a clip where you see a less sped up version so that you can get an idea of how long it actually takes me to paint this as nice as sped up versions are it does not reflect reality and even this particular clip that was slowed down is even sped up from my actual painting time see me darkening more spots so this represents the sand under the water and then the general curvy lines represent the top of the water or the bottom of the sand it's kind of all muddled up together just everything blending onto the page looking very abstract but also really flowing together as you would see in the water because everything is flowing together you can also see the light darkening around me as i paint on towards the evening where the light starts to disappear from my painting and then the light picks up again the next day when i'm painting again because i don't paint through the night because i cannot film uh, at night time because i just don't have the right light sources it is something that i want to work on and i want to be able to paint later at night when i feel like it but at the moment that's just not possible. As with most paintings, you have a depth effect because, you know, the further back you go into the painting, the further back you are in your scenery. So here I'm representing depth by making the swirls or the curvy lines a little bit smaller towards the back or the middle of my painting. And then the ones closer to the bottom are fatter to represent that they are closer to the angle of the camera that would be taking a picture. And the same can be said from the top with the little thin white squiggles at the top that are really thin and small. And then the ones closer to the bottom or the middle are quite 
large. I filled in some of the white squiggles with some really light blue watercolor because I just I wanted it to blend in a little bit more and not just have really really big blank spots. And then I'm moving on to my dolphins. Now again with the dolphins I think I could have used gouache as well here because of the details that I'm going into but I really do love using watercolor because it is so malleable and you can really blend things in very very nicely and here you can see me doing that with the dolphins and I'm really just copying an image here, a photo, so I can get the shadows in the right spots and the highlights in the right spots. Now again with watercolour you always want to start with the lightest shade and then build up the colour and the intensity of the colour because if you start with the intense colours you cannot really scale it back unless you wash a lot of water onto it and if you don't have the right paper then that can just have a bad effect on your, on your painting. To finish up this painting, I'm just adding these kind of white stripes across my dolphins to represent that they are underwater and blending them in with the kind of sandy bottom and this curved lines, just to give it a bit more of a depth effect there. I am joining some of the blue, some of the white squiggles on the top to make it a little bit more flowy, a little bit more like water, and then that painting is done. I removed my washi tape holding my painting down and I did learn from my previous paintings from my monthly plan with me uh, to tape it down to the surf to my table because that way the paper doesn't warp as much and it is pretty flat I'm pretty happy with how this print turned out and of course this will be turned into a print that you can buy on my Etsy shop so link in the description down below now as I said earlier I originally wanted to cut that painting in half but as you saw the dolphins are just too nice and I can't cut them so they're just going to be a back layout for my month of March. I'm also doing my month review although I forgot that I usually call it a month review and I wrote overview instead and this month review I've been doing since January this year and this particular layout and I really really like it. Now the elements of this month review are my positives and negatives of the month the different moods that I had throughout the month and so this mood tracker is from my it kind of represents the, my little mood pixels that are at the front of my journal so here's a quick picture I also have my biggest highlights my Instagram followers and my YouTube follower growth so I put it on the first of the month and then I also track it for the end of the month to see how many people have followed me by the end of the month I also have a small box it's called obsessing over so things that I'm absolutely obsessed with and I have brainstorming for goals for the next month. I have a little box for other things. And then I have at the bottom movies, TV shows and music that I am currently obsessed with or that I watched or listened to during that month over and over again or once for TV shows and movies. I decorated my page with a little bit more washi and then I'm filling out my little squares for my mood tracker. So just taking in the exact same colors. And because I've been using this kind of drop shadow blue box, I'm just adding my drop shadows with my Pentel brush. Because this page doesn't fit directly into my journal in the size that it is, I am cutting the borders off where I put the tape down. I actually think it looks cooler with the borders on, but when you stick it into the journal, it has automatic borders, so I actually think that that's totally fine. And also on the print, it will have borders as well. Now because this column on the left is blank, I decided to add in a final portrait, or sorry, a final painting. And I'm going back to my pool theme and doing a nice summer by the pool idea. Because I really enjoy painting this kind of scenery. Maybe you'll notice that I'm using different watercolors because I recently went and purchased the Winsor Newton watercolors for the first time. And I absolutely love using them, although I've got to be honest, I feel like there's a bit of a learning curve because I'm so used to using this other watercolour set that I have, which is kind of like a, a beginner set, and I guess I'm just not used to this quality of watercolour. And you can see me switching paintbrushes as well during this whole process because I wanted to see and test my paintbrushes to see which ones were better for painting with this particular watercolour. And no surprise, the better paintbrush was the one that came with the set. It holds more water in the paintbrush than my other paintbrushes. I also included a little girl reading a book by the edge of the pool. And because I didn't want to fuss with any particular design, I just put a hat on her head so it was super easy to paint. 
Now, I also wanted the shadows coming from the bottom and going up, so you'll see me add that into the pool. I retake my brick painting from my monthly spreads and I just colour in her hat and add some details to the books. I add the depth effect to the pool, so the little line from the shadow. I add in a little bit of a kind of wave coming from somebody kicking on the other side of the pool that you wouldn't see. And here's just a slowed down version of it so that you can see what I'm actually doing. I just paint half of this squiggle circle, whatever you want to call it, and just so to create that curved line in the water. I painted my girl who was reading and I just made this very basic neutral skin tone color adding in some shadows and some creases where you would see them in the in the light and then I decided that I also really wanted to add a little bit more to this painting so to do that I'm actually going to add in shadows of this palm tree on the side or this bush I'm not really sure what you would call it but at first I'm just adding in the shadows in the water so the little pointed leaves and then I'm going to use some wash paints to add in the leaves because I don't want to use watercolor in this part I just paint on a very thin green leaf just a little bit underneath of the shadows to represent the shadow effect and that little bookmark slash column slash header slash whatever you want to call it is ready to be put into my journal now none of the prints or the paintings that i've done this month are actually stuck into my journal i decided to use these little corner sticky tabs that you would use in scrapbooking to hold them into position because they are turning into prints and so i want to be able to take them out just in case i need to take a new photo of them i write march on the bottom just to emphasize that we are in march and here is a quick flip through of all of the spreads. And here is my review with the paintings and everything put together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Now, if you want to see me set up my monthly spreads, you can click on the video right over here.